Hi, I want to talk about the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rule, which are the rules that we use for determining approximately what orbits we would expect to contain an electron if an atom happens to be in its ground state. Now, the Pauli exclusion principle is a property of fermions, and what Pauli said was fermions, which are spin one-half or spin three-halves particles, have to have a unique set of quantum numbers. We cannot have more than one fermion with a given set of quantum numbers. So with electrons in orbits, we have an energy quantum number, n, we have an angular momentum quantum number, l, we have a magnetic angular momentum quantum number level, m sub l, and then we have spin, spin up and spin down. So each one of those four numbers would have to be a unique combination for every single electron that we have in an atom that has multiple electrons. The other rule for filling electrons is known as Hund's rule, which the Fermi, the Pauli exclusion principle for fermions seems to be a pretty robust rule. Hund's rule is something that is occasionally violated, in part because as you start getting many electrons in an atom, it starts shifting energy levels of orbit slightly as those additional particles interact with each other. So this is a rule of thumb that usually applies. In orbits of equal amounts of energy, spins prefer to avoid pairing up. So atoms try to maximize the most number of unpaired spins. And it's something that we would usually see an exception to if we happen to be right at a place where we're adding a new family of energy orbits. So let's take a look at some applications with some atoms. For the hydrogen atom, the ground state would be n equals 1. We only have one electron. Since n equals 1, l has to be 0. Since l is 0, m sub l has to be 0. We actually have two orbits, up or down. And unless we were to actually do a magnetic projection, we wouldn't necessarily know if it were a spin up or spin down electron, but it's pretty much arbitrary. Though I think a lot of folks tend to use upward bias. So normally folks would just write up for that and then start adding in downs once you run out of ups. So for helium, helium has two electrons. Well, there are two possible orbits in the one zero zero energy and angular momentum levels. So the first electron we would say would have n equals one, l equals zero, ml equals zero, spin up. The second electron would be n equals one, l equals zero, m sub l equals zero, spin down. Then we need to go up to the next energy level if we want to start adding more electrons. So for lithium, we would have the first two electrons in the one zero zero range and then the next electron would go into level two. So we start with n equals two and we start with the lowest angular momentum states. So we would then go to two, zero, zero, up. And then we go to beryllium and then we start running into some questions because yeah, there's the two zero zero state and there's up and down. So we could put two electrons there but there also is the n equals 2, l equals 1 state. So would we have 2 up, 1 in the n equals 2, l equals 0, and 1 in the n equals 2, l equals 1 state? That's where the sort of idea of Hund's rule and all of the interactions coming into play can make things a little bit tricky. Now, in chemistry, we don't normally talk about quantum numbers except for the energy level. So usually if we're writing out the location of an electron, we'll start by writing the energy level 
even though there is a letter that's associated with each one of these energy levels, I have never experienced a shell notation, but it's very common to see things written with an energy level. And then the different orbital quantum numbers, L, have an assigned what's called subshell symbol. So for L equals zero, it's called the S subshell. L equals one, it's called the P subshell. L equals two is the D subshell, then it goes F, G, H. I don't remember what's beyond H though, because usually it's very rare to see a ground state electron outside of the D subshell. And the reason for that is each one of those subshells gets an increasingly large number of possible electrons. So for L equals zero, we have two electrons. L equals zero, ML equals zero, up, down. That's it. But when L equals one, we get six orbits. We could have one positive one for M sub L, up and down. We could have one zero for M sub L, up and down. And we could have one negative one, up and down. So that gives us six levels. For L equals two, we get 10 levels because each one of those m sub l values, we have two times l plus one levels to deal with in m sub l. So since we can have two electrons, one spin up, one spin down in each one of those, two times l plus one times two are the total number of orbits at that angular momentum level. So, if we were to get to something more complicated like chlorine. Chlorine is 17 electrons. So we start energy level one. We only have an S subshell, so we can fit two in that, so we would have one S2. We then go to the N equals two energy level. In the S subshell, L equals zero, we can fit two there. We still have 13 electrons to deal with. We go to the L equals one, which is the P subshell, so we have 2p, we can fit 6 there, so we'll take 6 out of that total. That means we've dealt with 10, we still have 7 electrons remaining. So then we go to the 3s, we can fit 2 in there. The 3p, we can fit 5 in there, and that's it. There's one more electron that we could possibly fit in there, and then that subshell would be completely full. Now, with dealing with these subshells, rather than having to write out all of the lower subshells, it's common to use a notation where you will start at the end of a period in the periodic table, just above where your element is, so the row above chlorine gives us neon. So you could write neon in brackets, and that means it has the electron configuration of neon, plus two electrons in the 3s, five electrons, in the 3p orbital subshells. So as you get to more and more complicated things, that becomes really convenient because for uranium, if you have 92 electrons, you don't necessarily wanna to have to write out enough spaces for 92. You could jump up to radium or radon, not radium, radon, which is the Nobel gas just before uranium, and then start in with the configuration of subshells that you would need to get from the electron configuration of radon up to the electron configuration of uranium. Thanks for watching.